What is the difference between arguing and fighting? It may seem like they are synonyms, but they really aren't. Arguing is actually a positive word because it means that two or more people are trying to come to an agreement on how a problem should be solved. They are engaging in what is called stasis theory. Stasis is another word for equilibrium. In this case, the full theory is that where there is civil unrest, People need to try to find that equilibrium so that both parties can be satisfied or at least content with the results. You probably engage in this in your daily life without realizing it. Does this type of conversation sound familiar to you? Hey, are you getting hungry? Sure, I could go for a bite. What do you suggest? How about pizza? Didn't we have pizza two nights ago? Well, we had Italian, yes, but do you really consider pizza authentic Italian food? Actually, I do, because that marinara sauce is in everything Italian, and it gives me awful acid reflux. Okay, first, gross. Next, what are you thinking instead? I think I could go for a good steak. How about Sizzler? The steak sounds good, yes, but Sizzler? Don't you find their steaks pretty tiny for six ounces? Once they cook all that fat out, you've got a two-inch cubed piece of meat. Now, roadhouse steaks, they are the bomb. Well, they aren't good, but they are a bit pricey. Whose turn is it to pay? Tell you what, since you picked up the tab for the Italian, how about I pay for the dinner tonight? Plus, there are always leftovers, so this should give us food for a couple of days. That sounds like a good plan. Let's go. Perhaps your conversations about food go on a little longer depending on who you are going out with, but hopefully you are able to come to an agreement. This is actually a model of stasis theory in action. Here's how it works. There are four basic stasis questions. A. Question of fact or conjecture. Does the problem exist? In this case, one person is hungry. If the other person is hungry too, then the problem exists that both require food and they both need to agree on how to obtain that food. B. Question of definition. In this case, the two debaters need to define the type of food they shall get. In this case, they debate whether pizza is considered authentic Italian food. The marinara sauce acts as the key to the definition and the fact that one person has trouble with the marinara sauce causes the other to seek an alternative. C. Question of quality. Which option is the most suitable for both people? While both can agree that steak is a great idea, they now need to determine what steak is the best to get. D. Question of policy. Finally, the parties need to agree as to who will pay for the meal. In this case, two have an unwritten agreement that they take turns paying for the meals. Also, the person who initiated the conversation offers an additional benefit to the more pricey choice, more food that also solves the problem of eating the next day. In this way, both parties agree on how the problem will be solved and the responsibility of each party. This is stasis theory. It seems simple here especially considering that most couples have a much harder time reaching an agreement, but this process works as long as both parties want to reach contentment. As you can see, there is not a winner in this case. The initial request was for person one to have Italian food. So did that person lose? No, the problem of being hungry will be solved. But most arguments that need to be settled are much more complicated. Let's tackle a hard one, racial profiling. This is a topic that is very far away from stasis. Let's take a look at what has to be determined. Question of fact, is this a problem? The first argument that needs to be settled is whether racial profiling is a problem in the first place. Both sides need to acknowledge that skin color, dress, and ethnic origin influence police officers in the daily decisions they make about whether someone is a potential suspect of criminal behavior. While we see and hear many examples that this is so, we also have to acknowledge those police officers have many experiences where suspects who aren't criminals behave a certain way, so they must proceed cautiously. 
this agreement must be reached first. Question of definition. What is racial profiling? The Oxford Dictionary provides the definition. The use of race or ethnicity is grounds for suspecting someone of having committed an offense. Simple? Not really. Ask most police officers if they racially profile and they say they don't. We all can agree that racial profiling is bad, but as we have seen so many times in the past, the number of innocent young black and Hispanic men who have been detained, or worse, shot by police officers, lead us to believe the opposite. Look at this. It's an example of racial profiling. In the state of Colorado, racial profiling is prohibited. They deny wrongdoing. Again, stasis is difficult to reach if parties can't agree on what racial profiling is. Question of quality. In the case of racial profiling, quality would have to deal with whether a person's behavior is harmful to other civilians and or police. In many instances where a marginalized citizen is stopped or detained by the police, there must always be probable cause that the person is in some way harmful to himself or to those around him. Let's look at a study completed in March of 2022 in the city of Austin, Texas. According to KAXN News, the study showed that Blacks and Hispanics were stopped more frequently than Whites in greater proportion. However, the data indicates that police officers did not know the race or gender of the drivers they were stopping until ID was presented. Each stop was justified for a traffic infraction. So the question becomes whether these specific drivers are poorer drivers or whether there is implicit bias and the police officers are unaware that they are noticing the drivers because of their color. What is the answer? When will both sides agree on this? And finally, question of policy. What should we do about this? Usually, whenever a police officer from a specific area has been found guilty of violating the civil rights of a person through racial profiling, one way the force must make restitution is by requiring fellow police officers to go through implicit bias training. However, according to UC Berkeley undergraduate professor Jack Glazer in his 2015 article, How to Reduce Racial Profiling, there's no specific training available that can effectively stop implicit bias among police officers. Until an effective solution can be found to retain officers, the only recourse will be to punish those officers who take their implicit biases too far. As you can see, stasis theory may not be so easy after all, but in order for everyone to come closer to an agreement, there must be a conscious effort to agree on all four questions. Question of fact, question of definition, question of quality, and question of policy. As you formulate ideas for any argument you are asked to consider, use these four questions to guide your thinking.